Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Um, I know, and the leadership of the schools know how uh, important is the community of uh, MBA, executive MBA, in all the formats we have, weekend, evening, part-time, the global one. Uh, important is this community uh, for us. Uh, so thank you so much for being close uh, with the school. Um, let me say also thank you to our guest, to Diego, to Luca. By the way, when I was a young post-PhD at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, Campbell Soups helped me to survive and to push my... So I remember a mushroom, a mushroom one that was, yeah, I don't know how much they were at that time matching with the nutrition manifesto that we have now, but I, I remember they were good. So thank you, Luca, for this. I have to put an analogy in my papers about this. I have to remember this. Okay. Uh, so the, the quality of the discussion and today, I think it's a clear evidence on how vibrant, dynamic, uh, and passionate is this community. So I'm, we're really proud of it, and I hope you will be also proud of your school. As you know, the stronger we are, the stronger you are, and vice versa. So we, we want a school, we wish a school, able to support our large community. And uh, Ricardo mentioned the uh, continuous learning uh, activity we are, we are undertaking and we want to improve, by the way. Um, so um, we want to support this community in challenging the future of this world that, as you know, is changing at the speed of light. Uh, so I thought that was uh, important to update you on our strategy, on what we're doing, directions we are taking, and the changes we are implementing. Um, as in a kind, let me use this metaphor. Uh, with a raw block of clay, we are molding a new school, um, uh, exploiting the fact that we have a strong collaboration with the university, uh, with the help of a rector who, is a, who loves both SDA and innovation, which is particularly important in a period in which we are implementing a lot of innovation, uh, taking obviously the best from our brilliant past, leveraging on our roots and on the values of our founders, uh, but also transforming and adapting our models to the uh, business model, to the, cha the challenges that we have in our in our industry. That's the reason why I know I am the remaining wall, obstacle between you and the preparation of the gala dinner. So I'm going to try to be very efficient, but also effective in, in, in sharing with you what we are doing. So the big changes in front of us, when, when, if you close your eyes and, uh, and you respond to the question, tell me industries in which uh, you see revolutions of the business models, you see transformation, uh, I don't think you're going to cite education industry. However, if you see what's going on there, if you look at the, you know, the, the competitive landscape, you will see technologies, you will see newcomers, you will see a lot of transformations. And particularly, I'm going to uh, sum up these transformations, uh, simplifying a little bit in two. The first one is about, I mean, the supply side. So there are there's a new competition here. As I said, uh, Digital technologies, particularly di uh, learning technologies, are disrupting our industry, uh, are uh, allowing new competitors to come. For instance, if I'm going to ask you, uh, we, we know that competitors, our competitors, and when we do, by the way, all our benchmarking and we look at the rankings, we think about the Americans or HBS and Wharton and, and Stanford, whatever, or the European one or the Asian one, by the way, was becoming very stronger. But if you, if you think about new, new competitors and newcomers in the industry, can you give me a name of a new competitor in the education industry? Do you have any idea? Yeah. Or Coursera or LinkedIn. Look, what LinkedIn is doing now in the education is, in, industry is amazing. Uh, and by the way, they know us very well. They know our capabilities. They have the map of our competences, so they're quick quite dangerous. So new competitors, new competitive processes, uh, but also there is a revolution on the demand side as also uh, Diego was uh, uh, and, and also Luca, they were 
they were uh, sharing with us so the, the skills revolution, which is something related to the technology, and this is something, I don't know if this is true, it can be a fake news, but I mean, the gurus say that 65% of the jobs of the Generation Z will uh, doing the, uh, the, do not yet exist now. So, which means a, a, huge, a huge transformation that we have to face. And, and so, what we are essentially doing, if you, if you do, this is a, a, a research done by the World Economic Forum about future, about future capabilities, the skills of the future. And if you see, they are changing. And if you look at the names, you think about when you were attending your MBA here, I mean, look at the list there. There are, for instance, many things we don't teach, like critical thinking. We are starting now in the university. I think we are one of the first universities in Europe in which, by the way, the rector Gianmario is pushing to have a mandatory seminar on critical thinking. So if you look at the list of these competencies, I don't know if we can call them skills or competencies. Maybe we have to use the idea of intelligence or intelligences. And our challenge, the major challenge, is to blend together and help our students, our people, uh, to blend, to merge together intelligence and competencies and traditional skills. In fact, intelligence, uh, I say S, because as we know, they have has multiple dimensions. The logical, the intrapersonal, the interpersonal, the verbal, and etc. And also, this is also important for us because it's a tremendous opportunity. Intelligence is malleable. So we can, we can really mold intelligence of our, of our people, of our participants. So to challenge this, obviously, we set an agenda for the next years. We started two years ago, uh, less than two years ago, when I was appointed. This is my second reunion, by the way. Um, we started and we set an agenda uh, together with, with Jamario, so we, we share what to do in the, in the, in the next years. And we, we essentially, what you can see here are something quite, quite simple if you want. So we want to be more global, and I tell you how. Obviously, uh, 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 you know, pushing uh, our innovation in formats, in contents, in using the, tech, the learning technologies. Strengthen what I call the discipline of rankings. Uh, ranking is a very, very tough competition, and there is a discipline behind this, which is a discipline in our processes, in our mechanisms, in the way in which we design our curricula. Uh, it's like when we, uh, uh, that's not my case, but I, I, I'm thinking about my wife. She wakes up at 5 o'clock in the morning to do yoga. This is discipline every day. So we have to have this, I sleep typically at 5 o'clock, but she does yoga. But this is kind of discipline as our, uh, and this is the discipline also that uh, our managing director, Lucia Benedetti, undertakes every day, by the way. So working on human ca capital and faculty, also leveraging on the huge efforts that the university is doing. I'm going to talk about facilities, which is a major change. And you have the possibility to experience this just by walking 300 meters the southwest, just in that direction, you will see our new campus and reinforcing the ecosystem of the school, and you are one of the most important stakeholders of our ecosystem. However, there's another aspiration we have, which is if you want more intellectual, we want to foster a new generation of leaders by, of leaders by enhancing their intelligence, intelligences, and also by feeding the lifelong learning that seems to be the way to survive in the age of automation. Uh, transformation, so this is the, the roadmap we have set, and is based on five pillars. As I said, strengthen the global experience, improve our curricula, change our uh, teaching uh, methodologies radically, enhance the customer experience, and go digital. These are the five pillars of the transformation we are implementing at Stabocconi School of Management. So let me start with the with the global. As you know, uh, education is a really a global industry. When I talk about my, uh, our MBA, by the way, thank you so much for the director of the MBAs I see here, both the former and the actual one, uh, all MBAs, as I said, the executive and the full-time. So it's a really a global, a global industry. What we are doing now, the first decisions we made is to, I mean, change and relaunch our campus in Mumbai. We're going to change the name. Uh, starting April 20, you're gonna, we're going to have Stabocconi Asia Center. Uh, we have a beautiful campus there. I'll show you. It's just, this is just the, 
the, the, the, the lobby of the campus. So uh, this is also your house. If you are traveling in Mumbai, please just let us know. You, you can be us there. We have spaces uh, eventually for you. And this is, uh, is going to be our bridge to Asia. A lot of competitors, they went in, in China, they went in Singapore, in Hong Kong. We made another decision many years ago. We are sticking there. We want to stay in India and uh, using the, the, the uh, Mumbai campus as our bridge to Asia. But then we are also expanding and doing uh, projects quite important in Germany, very important in China, Brazil, Dubai, and all the countries you see there. And also working on the faculty side by increasing substantially the you know, international faculties and also staff with international experiences and also involving more the Bocconi international faculty to, uh, to uh, also integrate more with the university. Uh, so the second change is about improving curricula. Uh, I've been talking with all the, I mean, the MBA directors, but this is not just for an MBA issue, it's also related with all our masters we do. So we want to help our managers, our future managers, our future leaders to deal with the complexity of the context. And so we are setting essentially courses in which we offer the ability to understand the context, the ability to connect the dots in which the context is composed, and then the ability to, I mean, implement. And this is the, the C, the context generation. Obviously, we are a school of management, a business school, having in mind always the results orientations. All, all our, our courses are essentially uh, built by having in mind that we have to offer these four capabilities to help the future leaders and the current leaders to deal with the complexity of the world. Uh, and also, as Jamario mentioned, why don't you exploit the fact that we are in a context in which we have wonderful economists, sociologists, social psychologists, we have people, uh, I mean, in the decision science department, as Jamario mentioned this morning, computer scientists, uh, we have also uh, political scientists, why don't we offer to our people the possibility to go beyond management? So we are also integrating our, our uh, courses with seminars and with TED Talks in which we offer the opportunity to also uh, discuss uh, with people that come from uh, disciplines which are different from the traditional management. Uh, and also to improve our curriculum, we made another decision. We need to avoid the commoditization of the knowledge we deliver, because if not, LinkedIn is going to kill us. What LinkedIn doesn't have is a research, is the ability to produce new knowledge. That's the reason why it's a fundamental uh, I mean, direction of our strategies to nurture our programs with research. If we don't do that one, we are not really going to survive in the long term because we are not offering something that is valuable for our students and our participants. So that's the reason why we care a lot of integrating our research into our teaching. And then, this is, I like this, so we want to transform since the importance of the experiences that we offer to our participants. We want to transform the courses into educational experiences. As we, you, you might know, we have a learning lab at Dabo uh, We started many years ago, uh, and we are investing. We have just uh, multiplied the, uh, the, 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 the people we have employed here by three just this year to help us to develop uh, web-based simulation, role-playing games, uh, all kind of tools that can help us to transform traditional face-to-face -face teaching into educational experiences, which are particularly important and valuable. And then, since uh, Diego uh, was talking about the app, so we have an app, by the way. You can download the app if you want, just now, in App Store, in Windows Phone, in Google Pay. This is the Zda Bocconi Life uh, app. It's a it's a, it's a wonderful app that's going to help you to understand what we are doing, to be connected with the school when you are coming here, also to you know, book all, all kinds of activities, leisure and restaurants and whatever you would do here in Milan when you visit, when you visit us. You can download it. It's obviously for free. And, but then we also started an important digital program. Essentially, these are the four main points. There are many things, just to sum up. 60% of all open courses we have to the market are blended. Second, all the courses are using a, a learning platform that we share with the university. It's called Blackboard, which is one of the most advanced platform 
of repository of materials, uh, of videos, of forum, whatever that helps this continuous learning. Uh, so we are going to enter into a very tough market, which is the online education market, by offering eight courses into 2018 fully online. It's going to be also a learning process for us. And the fourth one that was hard, that is that, as you remember, is to transform all our courses into paperless courses. No more printed papers, but just uh, uh, digital and online materials. This is for the God Digital. Um, I had the final slides with this, exactly this idea, but that's okay. Remember, we can have many houses, but only one is home. Thank you so much. <laughs>